How can we look upon all that we've done or failed to do and view it through the lens of our magnificence, especially when we've been trained to feel shame and self-reproach as a result of our perceived failures or flaws? We've all reacted to situations in the past in ways that we wouldn't want to today. I personally have done many things that I wouldn't choose to repeat, yet every recovering or recovered addict looks back with gratitude for the experience that brought him or her to a higher, more loving, sober place. As I've said in other places, true nobility is not about being better than someone else. It's about being better than you used to be. Every single experience in my life, right up to this day, was something I needed to go through in order to get to be here now, writing these words. What proof can I offer for this assertion? It happened. That's all the proof I need. As we look back on our life, we failed at nothing. All we've done is produce some results. It's imperative that we send love to those who were hurt by us and forgiveness to ourselves to heal our inner agony. We can then view it all as what we needed to experience in order to get to a higher place. One thing I've learned in my 65 years is that virtually every spiritual advance I've made toward a higher, closer alignment with God energy has been preceded by some kind of a fall from grace. Such mistakes, in quote, mistakes, in quote, allow me to write and speak from a more compassionate stance. That is, they always seem to provide me with the energy to propel myself to a higher place. Truly, I bless all of these failures, in quotes, because I know I needed to go there in order to get here. Be gentle and forgiving with yourself. Abandon any and all shame and refuse to engage in any self-repudiation. Instead, learn from Leo Tolstoy, who said that the most difficult thing, but an essential one, is to love life to love it even while one suffers, because life is all, life is God, and to love life means to love God. So love life, every moment of it, especially your blunder-filled past. Dr. Abraham Maslow, perhaps the most influential person in my life many years ago, what is necessary to change a person is to change his awareness of himself. Consider how you might want to follow his advice. You can never be mediocre because you are magnificent in every way. So seek ways to change your awareness of yourself so that you're fully aware of your magnificence and can become receptive to inspiration, your ultimate calling. Our life must be open to Spirit's guidance in order for us to feel inspired. When the calendar becomes frenzied, full of unnecessary turbulence because we fail to simplify, we won't be able to hear those long-distance calls from our source, and we'll slip into stress, anguish, and even depression. So whatever it takes to feel joy, we simply must act upon it. Regardless of our current station in life, we have a spiritual contract to make joy our constant companion. So we must learn to make a conscious choice to say no to anything that takes us away from an inspired life. This can be done gently, while clearly showing others that this is how we choose to live. We can start by turning down requests that involve actions that don't correspond with our inner knowing about why we're here. Even at work, we can find ways to keep ourselves on an inspirational agenda. For example, during my years as a college professor, I recall being asked over and over to partake in activities that didn't correspond with my own inspiration. So I devised a simple solution. I took on more teaching assignments, and in exchange, my colleagues attended curriculum meetings, served on research committees, and wrote building improvement reports. I consistently listened to my heart, which always demanded joy. Keep in mind that it's only difficult or impossible to accomplish joy when we engage in resistant vibrational thinking. If we know that we don't have to live a life stuffed with non-joyful activities, then we can choose the way of inspiration. Opting for joy involves giving ourselves time for play instead of scheduling a workaholic nightmare. We deserve to feel joy. It's our spiritual calling. By giving ourselves free time to read, to meditate, to exercise, and walk in nature, we're inviting the guidance that's waiting patiently to come calling with inspirational messages. The bottom line here is that we can simplify life by cutting down on the busy work that keeps us off purpose. We must curtail such activities and listen to spirit, staying aware of joy and how simple it is to access. 
on the fateful day of September 11, 2001, what stuck in my mind were the cell phone calls made by the people on the ill-fated planes. Every single call was made to a loved one to connect back in love or to express final words of love. No one called the office or asked their stockbroker for a final appraisal of their financial status. As relationships that weren't love-based didn't enter the thoughts of those who knew they were leaving this physical world, their top priority was to be certain to close out their lives in love. Tell the kids that I love them. I love you. Give mom and dad my love. Just as love is the priority in the final moments of life, so it must be as we simplify life now. We can go toward a clearer life by examining and purifying our relationships with those we love, with ourselves, and with God. What we're looking for are connections that keep us in an energy of love, which is the highest and fastest energy in the universe.